welcome to this episode of the Corporate Escapist TV show and podcast. I am your host, Christine Innes, and I am so delighted to have the very beautiful Tracy joining us. Welcome, beautiful. Thank you, Christine. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm excited because we've got so much to talk about, but before I get carried away, I'm going to hand it over to you to introduce yourself, and then we're going to dive into some amazing conversation. Right, I'm Tracy Chapman and um, I live in the beautiful Perth, Western Australia. So I've actually uh, got a program that I call Thrive After Grief and I work as a resilience and transformation coach with people that are struggling any form of grief and they're really struggling in finding what their life actually is now because they've been hit so hard by you know, a loss of a loved one, uh, a loss of a body, uh, ill health, whatever. So I really help people transform and find that meaning and the joy again in life so that they really thrive and live a blessed life. Yeah. And you are also a number one Amazon bestseller as well. So you were in our book last year called A Resilient Life, which I thought was just so fitting for you. And, you know, you shared your beautiful story to uh, like really empower but also inspire people as well and I'm so grateful that you chose us to share your story um, with the world and you know as I said to really help empower because I really think you know after grief you step into some sort of empowerment after you go through all the different stages as well. You do actually and because of, of the work that I've been doing I've been selected by Brains magazine as one of their executive contributors so I write um, articles for them on the topic of healing grief and really what life is all about so I absolutely love what I do and that was um, I'm very proud to be one of their executive contributor contributors for the Brain magazine as well as being a two times best-selling author. Yes, amazing. And, you know, when you're working with people, and obviously it's such a sensitive topic as well when we talk about grief, and a lot of people either run towards getting help or support or other people, I guess, sort of shy away because it is still a taboo topic to talk about. It's a very taboo topic, but I think why it's such a taboo topic, people don't know how to talk to someone who is experiencing grief and the person that is going through the grief, they either can't stop talking about it or they shut down because they don't want to be constantly talking about it. So it's a double-edged sword, you know, they don't know who to talk to Um you go to therapists and that side of it. But I, for personally for myself, I found that therapy kept me in my grief. Um, and that's why I say it can be a double-edged sword. You don't know who to turn to. So there's not really a lot of avenues out there, whereas I empower people to move beyond that pain, that story, and really create a life that they're really going to thrive in now for the rest of their life yeah because it is like I mean you know I, I know your experience you know quite well you know but anybody who I guess like trying to talk to somebody who has gone you know who is grieving at the process what are some of the things that you would you know I guess suggest because there's I mean there's multiple different ways to do it but how can you approach somebody that is in that you know grieving stage as well it's it's holding space for them and it really does come down to the grief that they have experienced and the depth of that grief and why I say that is because I didn't share my story which was well twofold actually was losing my younger son to suicide and for a mother that was the most extraordinary pain that you could go through so the depth of that pain was really, 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 really hard to overcome, but it was allowing and holding space for that pain and all those depths of those pain, but also allowing that person to dive into that pain. They have to be ready and open for it. 
But until you dive into that pain and allow it to come through the body in the way that it needs to come through, you don't heal. So you you can't move beyond and out of that pain. So it's allowing, and what I do with my clients, is allowing that space for them to really emotionally deal with it with no judgment, no pushing, no saying, oh, well, why don't you feel this way or feel that way? Because everyone's grief is so individual and so personal, but it's allowing them that space to really feel that pain and then move forward. And it really does depend on the depth and the level of that pain for that person to allow the healing. Because we never move beyond, we never move. People say move forward. You do move forward. Um, and people say bounce back. But I say bounce forward. And that's what the resilient life was always about, was about. It's bouncing forward, but allowing yourself to have those emotions without trying to shove them down and feel that there's something wrong with you because you have these emotions. Because people mm. feel guilty that there's something wrong with them. Mm, absolutely like, I'm a big believer and this is where we really connected that first of all you need to feel in order to heal and I think the more you feel all the range of emotions you know and you know as somebody who is an empath as well like I can be happy sad within five minutes of another you know and I think that's also with grief you know like you know when my dad passed away you know like you'd feel happy you know because he's no longer in pain but then you're feeling the sadness because you've lost somebody you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that go through that sort of process. And as you know, you know, yourself, like with what you've also had to, I guess, move for, um, and actually experience all of the emotions in order for you to really heal, to be able to start sharing the story to help other people. That That's true, Christine, because at the very beginning, I just didn't want to face or touch on my emotions because I would just shove it down into my Pandora's box because mm-hmm. I felt that if I did feel my feelings, I didn't know if I could put myself back together again because it was so deep. It was so raw when my son passed because it was just completely out of um, character for him. And I just didn't think I could put myself back together. I was sort of thinking, why go on? Because everything in my life just completely changed. So I had to say to myself, well, okay, do I want to live and honour him or do do I want to stay stuck in this place where I was? And I didn't want to stay stuck there because it wasn't fair on my husband, my my other son, my fur babies or anyone else. So I had to allow myself and I went through it with coaching and that's why now I've become a coach is I had to allow personally to feel those feelings and I cried, I screamed, got angry, but I had to allow every single emotion to rise up through me and I when I was going through I thought it was going to break apart I really did because that was so so traumatic for me but I had to do it to heal and now I'm so glad I had the guidance and my beautiful coach at that time to take me through that but grief doesn't just come from losing a loved one it comes from other things as well so like I said before and we're talking about grief on the loss of a loved one but my coaching is all about that identity of self when you're going through grief because you feel like you've lost that life you had and you're trying to put your life together because just before my son passed I'm a big cyclist huge exercise person and I do long kilometers on the bike and on an early Saturday morning on my bike ride winter morning I was hit by a car very badly And my legs just took the whole impact of that accident. And I'm lucky to be alive. I really shouldn't be alive. But I have that that accident in that moment just took my, how I saw myself as an athlete because I can't do what I used to do. So I've had to really readjust and reassess. Well, okay, I'm still alive. 
I've taken a lot to be able to get myself walking and walking okay and, you know, that side of it again. So that's another two, twofold of what grief is all about. I lost my identity of, well, what my life was, you know, out cycling, out running. I've really struggled in these years to rebuild myself, but also who am I now because I can't do those things. So yeah. living in that past of not being able to do those things, it was, well, I have to change. I have to change, well, okay, what's going to bring me that joy and that happiness now? So I was grieving for what I had in my body as an athlete and what I could actually do. Um, so I've had to really readjust myself. And then, you know, not long after that, I lost my son. So I was double whammied <laughs> into yeah. a different life. <laughs> yeah. And I like the part that you talk about the identity because I can definitely relate to that because my experience, obviously, from, you know, my not-so-gracious exit from corporate was my identity was my career. And not having that corporate title, I lost my identity. And then also my son was, you know, you know, in his late teens, you know, turning into an adult. So I was no longer, you know, responsible for raising a human being, you know, he was out doing his own, you know, journey. So that identity crisis that, you know, I think a lot of people go through, that is really grieving the old part of you. And like you're saying, learning who are you now without having, I guess, those titles associated to yourself. That is so true. And what I have learned through my two, my, my grieving processes, because they're both very, very different, was that I was basing who I am, Tracy, on my external. So my being an athlete, uh, being a mother to two boys, being a provider to my two boys. But because I was always looking externally to my value and who I was, that was ripped away from me in a blink of an eye, just one moment, it was gone. So I'm really in my process of my healing and trying to find my way forward. So all the research I did when I really wanted to put myself back together, I've realised that who you are is not external. Who you are is internal. So when you come back to all your values, who you are, what you love, what you value in life, how you want to live your life, that's who you are and that's what you bring to the table. What you have, and like you were saying, Christine, your corporate world, you know, I was the same too in my corporate world, but that's something external to you. But what do you bring to the table of yourself to that corporate world? That can't get ripped away from you because you're with yeah. yourself every single day. You can't rip that away. So I guide people and I coach people to come back internally and really connect to themselves and the value they have around themselves because you can't rip that away. That can't get taken in a moment. No, absolutely, absolutely. And I think a lot of people, you know, underestimate the power of values um, like for people I know that have been following me, they know that I preach about values. I think it's a game changer for absolutely everybody and knowing what your values are, but also allowing your values to change because with every moment, with every experience, even conversations, our values can change as well because we change as human beings. Yeah, that is so true, Christine, because what I valued way back when, when I was, say, you know, 14, 15, 30s, you know, 40s, 50s, because I'm now in my 60s. So what I value in my life now is very, very different to what I valued then. So it's allowing and always looking, are they still my values or do I need to adjust my values? Because yeah. they will always keep changing as you evolve and as you go through life. They're not a one and done thing. A little mm. bit as your purpose isn't a one and done thing. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Do you want to explain to people what it's like working with you, sort of, you know, how your process runs? You know, is it one-on-one? Is it group? You know, how the, the program works? I really like the one-on-one -on -one with what I do because you read that person really needs that one-on-one. -on -one. But then they can go into, you know, a, a group and that's where, you know, people, you do learn from other people's 
uh, healings and processes and all the rest of it. But really to help that person, I like the one-on-one -on -one because I can really work with them. I can really hold that space for them, yeah. for that healing that they actually need. So I do, I do both. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, everybody's process is so different and so different. You know, the journey. And I, I think that's one of the biggest things that, you know, people, you know, everyone goes, oh, there's the seven stages of grief, but you might go through stage one to five and then back to two and all over the different place with it. There's not one set process that you're actually going to move through. Yes. I don't even talk about what they say, you know, yeah that's the norm, the seven pages of grief. I don't even touch on that. So I I look at it that it's like, you know, it's like an onion. You're not going to bite into an onion like an apple and just really enjoy it, are you? Because an onion's not that tasty, but your healing, your pain's not that tasty either. So I look at it, we've got to peel like the onion. When you're going to eat an onion, you eat it in bite-sized pieces because you've chopped it up so I look at it as peeling the outside of the onion and slowly peeling all those layers to getting to that very core of that onion and that's where your power is and your involvement is and your healing is and that's when you're able to move forward with so much grace and with yeah. so much connection to who you are so that you can really know who you are and love life again and really honour that life that you used to have because you're so much more powerful and so much more connected to who you are. Yeah, definitely. Because a lot of people see, I call them moments in life and because, you know, we have ups and downs all the, all the time, but your journey and how you reflect back on that can really help alter your perspective but also alter who you are as well it does it does and it, it's it's being not scared to actually do that mm. but as a coach you hold that person's space so that they can do that um and my guide them in it's well who's living your life you yes. know your friends aren't living your life your husband yeah. partner children no one's living your life for you you're living your life yeah. so how do you want to live that life it's not all that external and if you keep trying to look for the external validation well you're still never going to have that connection and living true to yourself and I always say you're, you're put on this planet for one reason don't get to the end of your life when you haven't played your music You've got to play your music while you're still here. That's why you're here and that's why you were put on the planet. Tomorrow is not a promise. Today mm. is a promise. This moment, this now is promise. So it's no good thinking, oh, I can do all that tomorrow because like my son, his yeah. tomorrow did not come. So it is in this moment where we live our life and really valuing that. And I think that is something I have really learned especially when I was hit by the car when I was cycling. That was horrific. <laughs> that was so awful. I I just said goodbye. I said goodbye to my husband. I said goodbye mm. to my son. I just said, you know, I said goodbye because I thought I was gone. Yeah. Um, and I really now appreciate what life is. So it's yeah. living in every day and making the most of every day. We have our ups and downs, that's emotions, that's part of it. But I give people the tools to be able to work actually through that. Mm, absolutely. Well, I think you're an absolute beautiful human being and what you do is so needed in this world because everybody experiences a level of grief and to be able to hold that beautiful sacred space for people I think is a, a very precious thing that you do. What is next for you in, you know, obviously you've written a book, you, you, you're doing the coaching. What's next for Tracy? Uh, I've actually, I've always, well, it's taken me a little while to want to get to that next stage. Um, and I've always thought of speaking like on stage. So that's my next avenue. I'm still doing what I'm doing with my coaching and whether I'll write a, another book because I've done two now. Um, I've actually been asked to speak at a, a mental health transformation mm -hmm. conference in Miami. And when they first asked me, it's in July, I said, look, unfortunately, I can't travel that far because of my other commitment. 
Um, but they came back to me and said, we really want you to be one of our speakers. So they've allowed and opened a spot for me to do that virtually. So I'll be, um, yeah, speaking on stage. So that'll be my my next step in my Incredible. my journey. Because as I speak about it, that's also a healing process for me too. It's mm. something you really, you never get over losing a son. No. Shoot no. suicide. No. And what was the, the process like writing the book and actually putting it on pen to paper, you know, and actually sharing, not just to yourself, you know, you're sharing this to the world now. What was that experience like for you? Um, when, well, it was, it was something I really had to want to do because I had to be prepared. For me, if I was going to write it, I had to sort of, open up to my feelings, my emotions and what happened on that mm. horrid, horrid day. And I thought, well, I have to be open and honest with that. But that was also a very, that was also a healing process for me as well. So that was also helping peel back more layers of that onion because hearing that news on that day uh, from the police that they had found my my son and he was deceased I I just screamed and screamed and screamed and you would have thought it was this wild animal because I just was so torn apart but in writing that in the book that helped bring that up also as well because I was shoving that down I wasn't allowing Mm. that moment in time to come up because it was just so emotional as a mother because a mother you hold your children in your womb and then you give birth to them and you have that umbilical cord, you're connected in so many ways. And that was just ripped from me when my son passed. So it allowed me to also another healing part of my journey, which I needed to do. Yeah, I do. I do find writing is a very therapeutic um you know for myself so I can completely relate to that as well yes um like I said I I really think what you're doing is a true gift um with it to be able to not only use your personal experience but now to help other people and I do truly believe what you're doing is empowering other people um because you really take give them the ability to take back that power again and to I guess you know really transform their lives to what they now can you know I guess see again because a lot of times when you're in that grief process you are uh, you feel stuck but also too you can't see past what the what's to come no it's like living in this fog you're living in this black tunnel and you see this tiny little speck of light up there Mm. but that light as you try to keep moving forward it just keeps moving forward as well So it's like driving the car and you're constantly looking in that rear view measure, mirror and until you start looking ahead, you can't see clearly. So yeah. it's taking that foot off the brake and allowing yourself to go through all those emotions. It's not an easy process, but I really guide my my clients that I'm here for you. You know, we yeah. can do this. You can do this. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, before we go, I'm going to ask you just five very random questions. This is just so people can get to know you a little bit better. So first question is, do you prefer tea or coffee in the morning? I have my coffee. (laughs) Yes. And do you prefer the beach or the country? Uh, I live right next to the beach, so I love the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Would you prefer to curl up with a book or watch a movie? Uh, A book. Mm Mm-hmm. And would you prefer, if you're going on a holiday destination, to travel by boat or plane? Uh, by, by plane. I want to get there quick. Boat's yes. too slow. <laughs> yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And if you could host a dinner party and invite anybody from the past or the present, who would that be? From the past or the present, I'd have my family. So I'd have my yeah. two sons, my husband, and my two fur babies. I love it. It would be a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful dinner party. I just want to say thank you so much to you for sharing your gifts in the book. We're going to put all the details below and also, you know, for helping so many people to really thrive like after grief as well. So thank you so much, Tracy, for being here today. 
Thank you, Christine, and thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you, and thank you, everyone, as well. So I say with grief, grief is not one thing. You can thrive after grief, but it takes work. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you to everyone who is watching this episode. If you have liked it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button below. If you've got any questions, pop them below, and to remember to live life to the fullest every single day. Love and light to you all. Yes, thank you.